Good morning. It's Monday, September 22nd, 2014. This is Tech Talk Today, episode 62, and it is a rainy morning in the Pacific Northwest, so it feels like we're dark in the studio den. I have the window open, and it's like we're uh, having a fireside chat today without the fire just yet. Uh, But maybe, maybe it's more like a group chat, because I'm also joined by an excellent team on the Mumble Room. Time appropriate greetings, Mumble citizens. Hi, yo. Hey oh. Greetings. Rain. Hola. Rain, more rain. Yes, yes. Eric and I are both in the Pacific Northwest getting rained on like crazy. And and you know what? Here we are in our warm, comfy uh, rooms, respectively, while my wife is walking out to the bus with three kids in the rain. So <laughs> I I feel bad for I Angela. I feel bad for yeah. her. <laughs> She's a trooper. All right. Speaking of troopers, uh, you know, I'm a trooper because I'm hanging tough while I wait for my SDK to show up for my Oculus Rift uh, new DK uh, development kit. In the meantime... Uh, owners of the old Oculus, the OG Oculus development kit, are going to be feeling pretty happy. I'll tell you about that in just a second. But first, those of you that are maybe interested in Oculus but wondering how you're ever going to get any games for it, Oculus has an answer for that. It's called the Oculus Platform, a marketplace for virtual reality apps, and they plan to launch it this fall, which um, I assume means there's probably going to be more consumer gear out since there's only development kits right now other than the Galaxy one. Uh, So, Oculus announced the Oculus Platform Store for developers to distribute their virtual reality apps and experiences today at the Oculus Connect conference. This is going on over the weekend. I picked this up for you. Uh, Starting this fall, the Samsung Gear VR made by Oculus and the revamp of the Oculus Share Marketplace will let users browse the Oculus Platform and download virtual reality apps, games, and entertainment experiences. Now, remember, one of the things about the Samsung VR headset doesn't connect to a computer. So, if you're going to get games, you've got to get them from somewhere. Um, and that also keeps it simple. The downside is with the Oculus, the standard Oculus headset connected to a PC, it comes out your HDMI port and you get the graphics capabilities of your built-in card. It's quite a bit more horsepower. And there's also more apps available for the PC right now. Eventually, there will be versions of the Oculus platform for the Rift on I- and uh, on iOS, which I think is kind of fascinating. I wonder if that means they're going to make a headset where your iPhone snaps in for Android and Windows Phone. Now, I don't know if these mean on Android if it's going to be its own standalone store, like a la the Amazon App Store, or if they're just going to integrate maybe a website. That obviously wouldn't be an option on iOS or Windows Phone, but they plan to be available there and also on Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Internet Explorer. I don't know what the hell that means, other than it has to be some sort of web-based system. Oculus Platform could be one of the first ways for developers to sell VR experiences they build, and by creating this marketplace, Oculus could rally the ecosystem to its mobile and PC-based VR headsets. What do you guys think? Is this what it's going to take to push virtual reality forward? It's going to take something like this. Definitely some place where people could actually get the apps, the virtual reality, because otherwise, where are people going to get it from? I mean, true. This it does seem like it has to be a component of it. I wonder. I question if it's if we're this close. It seems like there's more infrastructure things in place, like the fundamental technology working a little better and and more portable. Like, and maybe this is just my experience. You know, I've got uh, this is the Oculus DK2. I don't know if I have a camera shot here. Yeah, you can see it. So I have the Oculus DK2 right here. And I've been using it for a little while. It's a good experience. Um, it's extremely clunky, though. It's, you know, a lot of cords. There's a lot of things you have to set up. There's a separate webcam. There's an HDMI feed. There's a there's two USB plugs that need to go into the computer. There's different lenses you have to choose from. And then there's the pos- then there's the, the whole challenge of actually getting, like, a game that works. And uh, even though their pre-order page says it works on Linux, it doesn't. So I've been restricted to using it on the Mac or on Windows. It's seems better, in my opinion, on Windows. There's seems to be, on the Mac, it seems a little hacky, like you have to mirror your Mac and rotate your screen, and on Windows, it, it seems to treat it more as like a direct display device. So to me, and, and I guess maybe if you're using one of these Samsung piece of craps that's going to have half the horsepower but doesn't connect to a PC, yeah, it'll make it a lot easier. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not here, I, I'm not in, I'm not, I didn't buy a DK2 to get a watered-down, half-assed, VR experience is powered by an ARM processor. I'm here because I have high-end NVIDIA graphics cards, and I want to go in the frickin' holodeck. And I don't... See, the problem is, is this, to me, sounds like they're going to sell a bunch of crappy mobile apps that might work on the PC version sometimes, but they're going to be focused on these ones that are much easier to set up, because what I just rattled off to you, the problems with the DK2, average users, just your Joe users, aren't going to fight that. They want a console-like experience. It needs to be one cord, you hook it up to your computer, you put the headset on, Bob's your uncle. It's not that, and I don't see how it can be that with unless there's some new port because you need something that could send data, power, video, audio, and all of the USB data like tracking stuff too. So that's not 
how are you going to make this accessible for the PC? So this is going to be a bunch of mobile apps, and they're all going to suck compared to what you could get. And it sounds like, in my experience, when something like VR like this doesn't live up to the experience, when it doesn't live up to the hype, people just kind of discredit it, and it kind of just fades away. Yeah, I just, I, I look back, and I think of stuff like this has been envisioned since, oh, I don't know when. I remember the Game Boy VR, which was a joke. And then now you've got this coming out, and it's just, it seems like it's just going to take a while for the technology to refine. You know, I, I, Virtual Boy all over again. Hig, Hig, oh, Hiley yeah. Pig, uh, or whatever, Hiley Pig in the uh, chat room points out that Thunderbolt could probably do exactly what I was just talking about. It probably could do all those yeah, things. And is. you know, the new USB standard that they're working on right now, too, supplies 100 watts of power, so it could do it as well. Um, well I guess my core point is if. If this is a signal that they are abandoning the PC as the primary delivery platform for virtual reality, I think that spells doom for Oculus. If this is just them simply expanding into mobile because it's an easy way to get started, and now they have money from Zuck, they can do this, I'm okay. But I'll tell you why I take this kind of seriously. I've experienced the DK2 when it's working really well, and it felt like... A life-changing technology it it felt so more important than smartphones or anything or touch or anything else it truly felt like a life-changing technology it felt like it has one of those things that could reach into education health um, uh, recreation all of it in every I mean every asset that we use technology it just seems like it could be such a fundamental game changer and I hate to see somebody blow it because apps and mobile are hot and easy I don't think they're gonna, you know, blow it that way. I think it, it's just gonna depend on the developers and how much quality and time they're gonna spend on developing apps for it. But at the same time, you're absolutely right. It needs better infrastructure in order to work well. Yeah. Well, here's potentially a good sign. Uh, this is not. I'm a little skeptical of this, but check this out. Oculus is open sourcing the original Rift developer kit's firmware, schematics, and even its mechanics. Now you can't buy one of these right now, so it's you know you'd have to have one or be able to find one maybe on eBay. Uh, but the, at the Oculus Connect conference, the one I just mentioned in Los Angeles this weekend, uh, the Oculus uh, Oculus Group announced the original Oculus Rift developer kit is now fully open source. Don't know about the license. In fact, there's been some quibbles about. Uh, the, the license looks good, but then you open up some of the header files and there's some disclaimers in there that look bad. So, you know, look into this. But with the exceptions of pieces that aren't in production anymore, you're kind of have whole hog to this thing if you can get your hands on one. They said, we don't want anyone to, we don't want, this is a quote, we don't want everyone to have to take the same risk that we took. We just want to share the things we learned so you don't have to do that. We're all in this to build virtual reality together. It's pretty awesome. Now, I asked about the newer models, and they said, well, hold on now. Oh, okay, look, it took us about a year internally to figure this one out, and we're not sure we're going to do it again. But this, yeah. seems like a good, like, this seems like a good sign, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good thing, because what people can do is they can then take whatever, um, whatever they've got and maybe refine it and make it better. I mean, if it's open source, people can figure out ways to contribute back to it and make it better. Right, I like I like that Oculus seems to be willing to pretty much work with everybody too. Like, you know, they have uh, uh, the Samsung implementation uh, in the Samsung Galaxy VR is done. the The VR aspect is coded by Oculus. I think that's really cool. Well, it seems like they are willing to work with the community, like you were saying, and which is far better than most companies in their position. The DK One also wasn't. I mean, it was. It's. It's. It's very compelling technology, but now looking back at it, it's not too fundamentally breakthrough that people couldn't just sort of figure it out. Uh, and you can kind of even see the same thing with the DK2. I mean, there's a lot of it that is powered by a, by a smartphone screen. So it's an interesting piece of technology, and it's great to see it come out. And I hope that kind of thing would sort of uh, foster a, uh, more development on the PC side. You know, we just like to it's read... It's got potential. Yeah. We just like to read tea leaves here um, on the uh, Tech Talk today sometimes. You know, you get a sense. We've been following... The sniff of this whole, uh, what's the fate of Google Plus? Am I smelling a little zombie? A little dead man walking off Google Plus? You know, we've been call following that story over the last 60 episodes or so. Well, you guys tell me what you think in the mumble room. You are judge and jury for this one, okay? You th is this another sign of the demise of Google Plus? Or Google just bending to the requests of millions of users? Uh, mandatory Google Plus Gmail integration has been quietly shelved. Uh, Google has gone to a lot of lengths to convince everyone that Google Plus isn't going away. However, recently, 
Google just silently turned off that little thing where they forced you to create a Google Plus account when you were signed up for Gmail. No longer need a G Plus account. Is this, uh, is this Google sort of tacitly admitting they're going to spin down Google Plus so they don't want to add more users? What do you uh, think? I, th I think it's more like some people wanted Google Plus but didn't want Gmail and vice versa. And so they finally came to the public wanting what they want. All right, so Eric, your vote is not to put another notch in the death watch for Google Plus. I don't think so. Okay, I, I, I have maybe, to agree anybody... with Eric on that one. Okay, all right, go ahead. Bill, make your case, sir. Uh, all right, I, I'd certainly agree with what he had to say. It's a, it's a matter of a, a lot of people in the, uh, the community of, of all of Google's different services didn't exactly uh, appreciate all the integration, <laughs> as they would put it. Yeah. But really, it's just kind of a throwing everybody in one pot and saying, "Okay, you're going to do this, or you can just go elsewhere." I yeah, go I ahead, think Lyon. that I think that's especially people that wanted just a mail account, and I think there are way a lot of more people there that didn't want the Gmail, the G Plus thing at all. Maybe even small businesses that rely solely on Gmail, having one G Plus account for every single mail account would just be hideous to manage yeah and you know google points out in uh, in an update to the story that uh yeah you don't have to have a g plus account to use gmail however if the user in the future wants to make a comment on youtube or leave a restaurant review or make a comment on google maps or ever do a g plus post at that point any if they want to do any of those things they would then be required to make a google plus uh, account and this is my point i think what we are seeing is the scaling back of google plus i think what we are seeing is google admitting all right, we're not going to be the big player, but what Google Plus can be is I don't is plumbing the right word like the back end plumbing to tie a lot of our our various services together because Google's Google internally. You guys remember about a year ago when they changed to one unified privacy policy where each service had its own privacy policy and they restructured everything, and then they started sharing data. And that's actually I guess it was more than a year ago because that's where Google Now came from. Obviously, they had been working on it for a long time before they made this privacy change, but then they made it and made Google Now public. And there's a lot of those services that are now powered by that sharing of data across the multiple services, including AdWords. And I think what you're seeing here is Google wanted all of that to sort of be the accumul accumulated publicly in Google+. Plus. Like this, that was the public forward of it. And that was also they wanted to be, I think, where they got some of the most direct signals from you. Location, sharing of pictures for facial recognition, content from your posts for your language style, things like that. And I, and I think now they're recognizing that Google Plus will still serve a function for them to tie all of these disparate services together into one unified architecture. Like, for example, when I wanted to give Rekai the ability to upload videos to the Jupyter Broadcasting YouTube page. Well, that's tied to my Google ID, right? And I didn't want to give him my Google ID login. So um, I went to the Jupyter Broadcasting Google Plus page and added him as a video contributor, moderator, whatever it's called, administrator, on our Google Plus page for Jupyter Broadcasting, and that gave him access to upload videos to my YouTube page. And you can see how they can leverage Google Plus as almost like the orchestration a aspect of all your different Google services. And um, I, I, I still find it to be... I, what I like about Google Plus is the fle flexibility you have in the posting. I still find it to be probably my favorite of the services i also find it to be the bottom of the barrel valuable of the services like i, I actually find instagram to be more valuable and enjoyable than i find google plus not that i don't like the people on there in fact some of my favorite people to follow are on google plus but for some reason i just don't find it compelling to use at all and i think this is google kind of acknowledging a lot of people feel that way it's kind of healthy i think in the end of the day it's a healthy thing any other thoughts on that guys no. All right. I guess see, people don't care about Google+. Plus. That kind of proves my point right there. I mean, the yeah. fact that nobody wanted to voice out, I, I honestly expect that somebody would stay up and say, actually, I love Google+. Plus. I think it's great. I, I like oh. Google+, Plus, but not for the same reasons. It's because I, for some reason, my news feed is a lot better than yours, so I get a lot yeah. of... Yeah, yeah. I get a lot of good stuff, and that's where I post a lot of my stuff from uh, onto the subreddit for stuff for, like, No Udify. kidding. It's that good. Yeah. Yeah. It can wow, be. my Google Plus feed is so broken, and I don't know how to fix it. It is what had some what it, way of they what they have decided to present me could not be of any less value to me. I have the exact yeah. same experience. Really, thank you. I like the mechanics. Yes, but there's just nothing there. Right. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Because see, I have this problem where my and and it's the weirdest thing. Like honestly, uh, I've showed it to Eric. I'm not joking. Like it, my feed is filled with the strangest stuff. 
Like it is really odd. And like the the people that I really genuinely want to follow, like the developers in the Linux community, are posting at the times I'm on Google Plus and I'm not seeing the posts. And it's it's very odd because I know Facebook does that too, but like even there I'll eventually see something if I you know refresh. It. I don't know. It, anyways, we should move on because nobody cares about Google Plus. But <laughs> I, I just find it to be so frustrating because I wish I could get more value out of it. And the fact that Eric is, manages to mine it for good content makes me kind of frustrated because I feel like I could maybe find good content for the shows on there. And I'm 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 coming up with Russian brides all the time, literally. <laughs> Right, Eric? Didn't I show yes, you? Yes, the... it's true. Yes, I know. It's true. <laughs> it's the weird. And I, I, and I, I will, I will swear on a Bible. I have never once in my life searched for a Russian bride. The only thing I can figure <laughs> is that I get so much email that it is they're mining my Gmail and it has sent it completely off in the wrong direction. That's the only thing I can figure. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're maybe they're aggregating your spam too. I yeah, that's what I'm. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I, but I don't know. I don't even. I don't even check my spam, so I don't know what spam I'm getting. All right, so uh, let's talk about something besides Google. Let's talk about something that makes us a little more happier. Uh, well, actually, this isn't a great story. DuckDuckGo makes me happy, but this isn't a great story for them. Uh, privacy-oriented search, DuckDuckGo, which we all know and probably use frequently, if you know what I mean, uh, has kind of had a bit of a setback in China. They noticed over the weekend on Sunday that DuckDuckGo's founder and CEO was tweeting that they had indeed been blocked in China. Uh, and Great Fire Index noticed, they uh, they keep track of a lot of, Great Fire Index, we have them linked in the show notes, by the way, it's kind of a cool service. They keep track of all the different services that get blocked by the Chinese government, and they believe that DuckDuckGo started getting whacked on September 4th. Now, you might, you might at first be like, oh, that's, well, of course, it's DuckDuckGo, they, you know, they... They, the Chinese government is the antithesis of everything DuckDuckGo represents. But in actuality, DuckDuckGo has um, actually had quite a bit of traffic from there. Uh, it's exactly the kind of service that uh, the citizens from China want. Uh, and uh, with the exception of some occasional connection resets, just because they're across the, the ocean, um, DuckDuckGo has actually been pretty successful over there. But not really sure what changed, other than I was speculating it might have something to do with the fact that uh, DuckDuckGo was added to iOS 8. Um, and maybe they just decided the user base there would be too many users, so it was deci- it was time to kill the switch. I I don't know. It's an interesting story though. Uh, anybody in the uh, mumble room taking the Duck Duck Go challenge or switched completely over to Duck Duck Go? I switched before you announced it. Oh randomly. really? Really? Yeah. And how is it working for you? All right. I've had a couple searches that I just had to Google for, but then you've got that you know bang Google, and then it'll just take you straight to Google. Oh, that's cool. So when you do bang Google and then the search term, they'll search Google for you from DuckDuckGo? Oh, yeah. Haven't you seen those? There's like different bangs. You can like oh, bang I know about that. There's like a, whatever. There's like a bang JB if you want to search Jupiter Broadcasting. Oh, uh, really cool. Yeah. Uh, um, so wait a minute, though. But are it, when they search Google for you, is it private? Is it anonymous? How, or is it you searching it? Oh, okay. Maybe it looks like it's straight on it Google. It is a modified Google search, but I'm not sure how modified. Interesting. That's God, that. I love those bang commands. That is a super cool thing about DuckDuckGo. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, they have a whole big compiled list of them. I can't even count them all. That, yeah, that is neat. So I was just talking about uh, iOS. Uh, this this is the big story today. And <laughs> Funny, I put it at the end. Uh, this is the big story today. Uh, sales for the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, 10 million over the weekend. Now, to put that in perspective, Apple has sold more iPhone 6 in one weekend than Roku has ever sold any Roku device. That's the, that's as many Roku's as ever sold right there in one weekend, and you know they're still selling them like crazy. That's a phenomenal, phenomenal success. Tim Cook says sales for the iPhone six and iPhone six plus exceeded our expectations for the launch this weekend, and we couldn't be happier. We would like to thank all of our customers for making this the best launch ever, shattering all previous sell through records by a large margin. Current shipping estimates for the iPhone six orders remain at seven to ten business days, and the iPhone six. Has a growing shipping delay every day, but currently stands at four weeks. I also saw that um, the sale of the six was enormously higher than the six plus. Really? So, um, what does this tell us? Is this uh, is this uh, is Apple going to clean up now that they have a large phone, or, or did they did they land just at the time when a lot of people are getting exhausted with Android, uh, or is L going to come out? New line of devices, and everybody's just going to kind of stop talking about the iPhone in a month. What, what, what is it this time? Is this different? Ten million is unbelievable. Still have lines too. Some of the stores still have lines, which is crazy. I think it's just a matter of people who've been wanting a larger display for a long time, and now they finally got it. 
This seems like it's more than just existing iPhone users switching over, though. This seems like Android users that are bailing. I don't know. Maybe uh, not. Maybe not. I, I don't think so. Yeah, okay. I, I, it would seem like the cost would be too high from the ecosystem standpoint. So, it, Well, but... I could be wrong, but it does seem like this iPhone release has gotten a lot more hype than previous ones. You think? So perhaps just more people are thinking about it, and they're like, oh, mm. well, the new iPhone releases yeah. tomorrow. Maybe I should go get one. Yeah, I guess the bigger phone made a lot of news, didn't it? Uh, I yeah, wonder. I, I I think we'll be talking honestly by December. We'll be talking about how many iPhone Pluses have been returned. I've done it. <laughs> I had. Well, I, maybe it's just point. me, man. You know, I like the big screen. I, I've I've told you guys before. It's amazing for nav. It's fantastic for when you're laying on the couch. But when you're carrying it in your pocket, I had the Note too, and I had to give it to Matt because it was too big for me. I needed to go with a smaller device. You know, I don't go go in the chat room points out a good point. It's the watch. It could be. You think people are buying this because they plan to buy a watch? I think that's very possible because that watch does have some very intriguing features. Gosh, but dude, you realize Knowing that Apple customers. people are that you, you you realize you're saying that people are buying a at minimum four hundred dollar phone, so that way they can then buy at minimum a three hundred fifty dollar watch. <laughs> It's a um, well, wow. yeah, people are willing to drop a couple thousand dollars on a uh, a MacBook that you know they could get a much cheaper solution for. Mm. Exactly. It's all about that name and the technology there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In fact, there's a new rumor out today that there's going to be a fanless uh, MacBook Air coming out soon, 12 inch. So that yeah, that would probably be money better spent, to be honest with you, uh, if you're going to get in that system. Uh, I don't know. I it, it to me it to me it obviously indicates big phones are in. I don't know if it's a fad or not. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, ten million phones is nothing to sneeze at. You got to figure people are going to be trying to replicate that success. Hey, you know what? How about instead of buying a MacBook or a phone, save everybody some money and help out the Jupiter Broadcasting Network because we have a new jacket over at Teespring.com/jbjacket. It's a very limited run. There are in fact seven days left. So uh, seven days left to go over to teespring.com slash JB Jacket. This is our Ohio Linux Fest special edition jacket. That's why we're doing it only for seven days because we want it to ship and get to you so you can wear it to Ohio Linux Fest. Or if nothing else, maybe wear it while we while you watch our episode. I don't know. <laughs> you know, come on. It's a jacket, and it's fall, and it's awesome. It's got the Linux Action Show logo right above the breast pocket where, like, your communicator would go if you were Captain Picard. Uh, and it's just nice and classy. <laughs> we didn't put a big banner on the back. Angie and I were like, and then we put a big Linux Action Show logo, and we're like, ah, you know what? We don't need people to be billboards. We don't need to be tacky. It, 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 keep it simple. Keep it classy, right? There is yeah. a time for gaudy, which we may do again because sometimes it's just fun to go big. But this time we thought, no, people are going to go to a conference. They're going to be meeting and greeting. It's just nice and clean. we got several different colors, uh, dark blue, black, and gray, because why not go emo or semi-emo? I like the gray. Uh, in fact, the gray is there only because I wanted it. I don't even think Ange wanted the gray at all. But I was like, you know, here's the thing about black. Um, I, I am a messy eater. Sometimes when I go out to eat, I'm so excited to go out to eat that I just eat like crazy, and I get food on me. And the thing about black is, like, there's no getting out of that. Everybody everybody can see the crumb. Everybody knows Chris uh, went carby uh, for his lunch. No uh, Mr. Paleo today. But with gray, you know, I just feel like I get a little bit of cheap buffer. I'm not... Okay, let's... Listen, don't tell me that's not true. I just need to believe that with gray, the food doesn't show as much. And that's why I had Ange put a gray color on there. So you can get a gray color, too, over at teespring.com slash jbjacket. Grab yourself a dark blue, too, if you'd like. Uh, the 30 Bones, that'll go towards our travel costs for uh, Ohio Linux Fest because uh, I tried to uh, convince Ange to go with me. And then she's like, well, how can we afford to send both of us? And I'm like, but you, we both have to go. We have to go. And there, it's a very expensive thing to go out and cover something like that and bring crew and all that kind of thing, and gear, and the things you have to buy, and like the plane tickets and all that goodness. So you can help us cover that for this trip over at teespring.com slash jbjacket. Also, a family friend of ours uh, went through a recent tragedy. We have more information on there. And a dollar of your purchase will be contributed to a fund for them, uh, which, is, uh, which is an incredible story. And uh, we'll probably tell you more about sometime if they're okay with that on a faux show. Uh, teespring.com slash jbjacket to grab yourself the limited, very limited time fall edition Linux action show jacket. Seven days left, and we sold 44 of them already. To our, we have to get to 100 before the jacket unlocks. You know, it's like, a, it's a, how cool is that? Like, I think that's the coolest thing about Teespring because the reason we can do that is we know that at that point, we don't lose money. <laughs> you know? And which is great because we're not committed, so there's the under part. And if we make if we make it past that, okay, now we're not now we're not gonna lose any money, so everybody gets a jacket. Anything we make over hundred is gonna be profit, helps us pay our way, so we really appreciate it. Teespring.com. Dude, you'd look good in blue. That's your color. 
Yeah, well, that's talking. everybody keeps falling in love with my eyes ever since I appeared on last. Blaster, <laughs> if you could request requested a color, what would you have asked for? Did you want red? Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, red would have been fine. Yeah, see, I want red too. I wonder if Ange can add red. I'll ask her. Mm. Would you buy a red one if we put red up there? I would buy a red one in addition to the blue one. I oh, you already got like. a blue one. Okay. Oh, All right. Good man. Okay. Well, I kind of want a red one, but she thinks it's going to be too tacky. I don't know. Chat room, would you guys Would you guys like a red one? See, I do know it's very bold. It might be too tacky, but I just think it would look cool. I can't Maybe, do it. Uh, it brings out my cheeks per too Perhaps much. FSF maroon. <laughs> there yeah, <we> yeah. Go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that'll wrap up today's episode of Tech Talk Today. We'll be back tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern, over at jblive.tv. Don't forget about the subreddit. Help but give me an idea of what you'd like to see covered every single day. TechTalkToday.reddit.com. Also, I try to put links in there to every episode. Sometimes Reddit hates me and bans my own links. And then like people are like, why didn't you put a feedback thread there? I was like, I did. I just got spammed. Or sometimes I forget because I'm a busy person. Either one of those two things. But we'll just pretend like it's always Reddit, okay? That'll be like that'll be like your family secret that nobody talks about, but we all know. That'll be our little secret. And uh, you can also email us today at jupiterbroadcasting.com. So I got one last Linux commercial to take us out with. I think there might be other ones. If you know of another one, send them to me today at jupiterbroadcasting.com. This is actually one of my favorite ones that IBM ever did because it came out at a time when this was exactly, exactly what I was making my contract bones doing. Condensing, shrinking down, and putting it all on one system. It's a great ad. This way. It's the crime of the century. What was stolen? This is it. This is this way. This way. What happened? Everything happened. I, I, I called you as soon as I could. I'm happened. trying to get calm, but everything's gone. You want me to be calm? Is, is, is it possible that it's an inside job? Wait, I mean, we're inside, yeah. right? Hey, We've got to be pros, these guys. Calm down, sir, and tell us what happened. I can't happened. breathe. I need my pills. This way. The room's completely empty. What was stolen? Everything. 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 Payroll, R&D, customer records. Assets. All of the assets. How could they get everything? How do I know? You're the cops. I'd say, look, pal, we're the only friends you've got. How much money are we talking? A lot. Millions. 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 All the assets were in this room? Ned, the servers. They stole all our servers. No, we moved everything onto that one. It's going to save us a bundle. I sent out an email. IBM servers running Linux. What's a server? Good infrastructure. It can save you a bundle.